Good morning. We welcome you on this third Sunday of Advent. A very special welcome to anyone worshiping with us for the first time here in the sanctuary or online. As you can see, things look a little different today as we celebrate our annual children's Christmas pageant. We invite you to sign the friendship pads and pass them along, greeting each other warmly as I invite the children's choir up to share a song with us. was wonderful. Thank you. The altar flowers are given this week by Gary and Heidi Hastings in loving memory of their parents. A reminder to please be seated after we finish singing the first hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice, for the lighting of the Advent wreath. And then we ask that you also remain seated after the prayer of dedication for the pageant itself. The children will be moving back and forth during the songs, so we want to make sure they can be seen. So even when we're singing, we ask that you remain seated. A big thank you to Bruce Lane, who is handling our sound system this morning. And a huge thank you. You have no idea, probably, how many hands it takes to put the pageant together between the setup of the scenery, all of the rehearsals that we have, costumes. We have a whole team backstage making sure the kids come up when they're supposed to. So thank you very, very much to our whole team who has made this possible. Reverend Hughes is hiding over there doing tech today. He is here, too, and a big thank you to him. Uh, We are very proud of the children. They have worked very hard. They took direction well and have improved greatly throughout our rehearsals. And so I'm very excited for them to share today with you. This Thursday, I invite you to join me to do a labyrinth for our solstice. It's the longest night. It's the darkest night. And so we will have a labyrinth in Putnam Hall as well as some candle lighting here. It will be from 6 to 8 p.m., It will start with a guided meditation and then time to just be in the labyrinth and we'll end with a reading. You can come at the beginning, the end, the whole time, five minutes, whatever works for you, but we invite you to join us on the longest night. Poinsettia orders are due this Wednesday. You can order a a poinsettia in memory of or in honor of someone. There are forms on the welcome table in Putnam Hall and there's also a link in the Hilltop News. Next Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Advent, which also falls on Christmas Eve. So in the morning, we will be having a half-hour meditative service here in the sanctuary and online. We're calling it a sacred Christmas hush. It will be a time to sit still and simply be in the midst of all of the rushing around to get ready for Christmas morning. For Christmas Eve services, we have our 4 p.m. service and our 7 p.m. We are hopeful and optimistic that as attendance continues to increase post-pandemic, that we will be able to bring back our 11 o'clock service for next year. Are there any other announcements? 
If not, then let us prepare to share the joy of the birth of Christ. join me in the call to worship. We come to celebrate the birth of Christ. And pray for the shepherd girls and boys who protect their minds. We come to celebrate the birth of Christ. And sing the choir men whose tears fall off and angels reveal. We come to celebrate the birth of Christ. Today we will complete and close the circle of our Advent wreath with the lighting of all four candles. Our days of preparation are also coming to close. Soon we will joyfully celebrate the birth of our Lord who came that we might have life and have it abundantly. It is a different kind of joy that he brings us though. It is a joy that comes not from the awards that we receive or the gifts that are waiting for us under the tree with the love that we give. It is the same joy that led Elizabeth to celebrate when Mary came to visit her before Jesus was born. Instead of being jealous, Elizabeth was genuinely happy for Mary. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. This 
morning we light again the candle of hope and remember the message of hope that the angel Gabriel brought to Zechariah. We also light the candle of peace and remember the peace that Mary found when she put herself in God's hands. We also light the candle of love and remember not only God's love for us, but Joseph's love for Mary. Finally, we light the candle of joy and remember the joy that Elizabeth felt in her heart when she learned that Mary had been chosen to be the mother of the Messiah. Let us join in our Advent prayer. God of heavenly star, we keep you. We are each handmade by God in the image of God to be a source of goodness and light in this world. So as we work to make this world a more beautiful place, both here through our church and also in our daily lives, we come now to the altar with our tithes and our offerings.
please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of life, God of love, God of light, through your blessings we offer these gifts to you. May all that we give become a source for hope, for peace, for love, and for joy, the Christian family and faith, and for all of God's children. This we pray in the name of the Bethlehem child, who has come, who will come again, and is with us even now. Amen. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came unto her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed you are among women, you who are highly favored, hail. When Mary saw the angel, she was troubled by his words and wondered in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Blessed you are among women. Behold, you shall conceive and bring forth a son. He shall be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. When Mary asked how it could be, since she was not yet married, the angel answered her and said, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The angel gave Mary a sign and told her that her cousin Elizabeth was also a child. Even though she was of old age, the child in her womb was to be John the Baptist. So Mary was deeply moved in spirit and said to the angel, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And Mary went with haste to the house of Zacharias and greeted her cousin Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard the greeting, the babe in her womb leapt for joy. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and rejoiced, saying, Blessed are you among women, Mary, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why is it that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your voice came to my ears, the babe in my womb leapt for joy. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has sent us each a child to fill the world with love. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months and then returned home to her own home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. Her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had blessed her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that they decided to call the child Zacharias after his father. But Elizabeth answered them, Not so, she said, he shall be called John. They did not believe her, though, for none of her kindred were called by that name. So they went to Elizabeth's husband, Zacharias, to inquire of him as to what the child should be called. Now Zacharias could not talk, for he had doubted the angel, Gabriel, when told that his wife would conceive and bear a son in her old age. So he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name shall be John. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosened, and he praised God, saying, Blessed be the Lord of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people 
and has raised up for us a Savior from the house of David, as he promised, by the mouth of his prophets. And you, my child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, for you shall go before him to prepare the way of the Lord. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And everyone went to his own city to be enrolled. Joseph also went up from Galilee out to the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, because he was of the house and lineage of David. O oh Mary, I hope that you can stand this long and difficult journey. Good, Joseph. Baby and I are fine. Mary, tell me again about the angel. The angel sent from God. Yes, did you hear the sound of trumpets or a long or a loud and glorious song? It wasn't like that, but I did hear a voice sing to me, and then when I was with Elizabeth, we heard it sing to us again. I believe you, Mary, for in a dream I heard them too, those voices telling me to trust in God and not to be afraid to take you as my wife. God has chosen us, Joseph, and I do not know why, but in our hearts, by God's will, I know that we must abide. When Mary and Joseph came unto Bethlehem, they went first to the inn, seeking shelter for the night. O oh, innkeeper, I beg of you, the smallest sort of room will do. Good people, I pity you, for I see that the woman is heavy with child. But every room in the inn is full. What am I to do? Good innkeeper, send us not away. Have you not a stable where we might nestle in the hay? I do indeed have a stable, but it's rather crude and bare. You are more than welcome, however, to spend the night there. Kind sir, we thank you. And I am sure that God will bless you too and remember you for your kindness. It is not what I would like to offer you, but it will have to do. And that night, Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there is no room for them in the inn. God sends us that same child to us today to fill the world with love. And there they were in that same country 
shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone about, round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy that shall be unto all people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was a multitude. And suddenly there, there, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on per peace, earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. After the angel went away into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying that they had been told them concerning the child. All that heard it wondered at what the shepherd said, but Mary pondered them in her heart. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. Then Herod called the wise men, and inquired of them diligently what time the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. So the wise men departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, until it came and stood over the stable. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy.
when it when they came into the house, they saw the child with its mother Mary, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being warned by God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. So it came to pass in those days in Bethlehem, town far, far away, a cattle shed held gentle Mary, who birthed her baby in the hay. If we listen in our hearts today, though we can still hear the angels sing, come worship shepherds, wise men all, come worship Christ, the newborn king, for God has sent a child to us today to fill the world with love. People of God, our service of worship has ended. May the love of Joseph, the hope of Mary, the joy of the angels, and the peace of the Christ child be with us this Christmas and every day. And may we go forth from wherever we may be, sharing the love and light of the Bethlehem child with all those we meet. Amen.